Faro Town, a popular tourist destination. Peaceful and picturesque. Hard to imagine 140 years ago, Chinese men came in their droves to seek their fortunes. These buildings are a constant reminder of the hardship and discrimination these men had to endure before very slowly being accepted into society. David Clark of the Arrowtown Museum led me on a trip back in time. The lonely life of gold miners in a foreign land, without wives and children in a society that was not yet prepared to accept them. The, the gold rush occurred in 1862 and the European settlement was built up on that terrace over there. In 1865, however, another gold rush took place on the west coast of the South Island and all the miners took off to that. There was better gold to be found and that left the shopkeepers up in the European town there devoid of customers. In an effort to stimulate the economy of central Otago, the provincial council invited Chinese to come from both Victoria and from Canton province in China. When they arrived, there was immediate persecution and they were forced more or less to set up a settlement away from the main part of town outside of the European settlement in the coldest part of town. Perhaps the best preserved of the buildings in the Chinese settlement is Alam's store. Alam was the leader of the community here. He was an interpreter. He had been a policeman back in China. He could speak English, so he acted as a translator. There's on one side is his uh, kitchen and his bedroom. On the other side is where he sold his produce and bought, um, so, you know, banked the money and probably uh, smoked opium. Half it was store, half it was living quarters. And it's uh, by far the most ornate building in the settlement when you compare it with some of the other huts that the miners had to live in. You know, these miners arrived with absolutely nothing and they had to build some sort of houses, but they built them out of really basic rudimentary materials, whatever they could find, thinking they'd only be here for a short period of time before they made their money and went back to China. So hence, we just get mud, corrugated iron, sticks of timber. And some of these miners stayed in these huts for up to 40 years in these sort of conditions, you know, incredible. But it wasn't all bad during the winter because they had the camaraderie and in the middle of the settlement was a, a storehouse called Su Sing Store, it no longer exists, where they got together, played cards, gambled, had a drink of brandy and quite often entertained um, Europeans down here. So, you know, the, they had some social life. In 1983, an archaeological dig by Otago University in the Conservation Department uncovered a selection of artefacts that gave insight into these gold miners' lives. These artefacts are now held at the Lake District Museum as part of an impressive section which is dedicated to the Chinese. Oh wow, look at that. Um, the archaeological dig was really important. For instance, we can find out here that they had a, a very, very diet, much superior diet than probably the European miners who were living on flour and water and, and mutton. These guys had connections down to the south coast. They were bringing up oysters, there was seafood. They had networks back to China, bringing in the rice, the pickles, the spices. Um, so all in all, and then they had their own market gardens, producing produce that they later sold or bartered with the European settlers and in that respect they gained great respect from the Europeans for supplying them with vegetables as well. As time went on and the Europeans realised that the Chinese were law abiding and hard working they came to accept them and when the last Chinese miner, um, a miner called Ah Gum, died in 1928 the pallbearers at his funeral were made up of representatives of every European denomination in town so it was almost like a a final fitting tribute to the fact that the Europeans had persecuted the Chinese that lived here. The next time you're in Arrowtown, make sure you stop by the museum in the Chinese gold mining settlement for a part of our history that shouldn't be forgotten.
was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.